we're first going to, um, basically I'm uh, introduce the problem and talk a little bit about a few technical details. And then uh, Michael is um, saving you from all this uh, technical jibber jabber and basically presents some business aspects. So let's do first a show of hands. Uh, who of you is actively involved in a Magnolia project? Okay, yeah. And who of you actually have experience working with uh, so external development teams or external suppliers? So either, either on, the, on the client side or on the supplier side? Okay, and who of you have experienced, uh, at, um, let's say, a, a project team where you have been working with multiple suppliers from different companies? Oh, okay. Interesting. So, um, basically this is about us, but uh, let's don't waste time and, and just get to the point. Uh, so, the re reasons uh, probably are very obvious. Why would you do, do that, right? Why, as a client, why would you hire multiple um, suppliers, either in parallel or in a sequential way, on working on the same project? So, you basically um, hire, let's say, one or two external development teams, right? Let's say there are two. And basically, um, you meet with them, like, every week uh, to discuss status and, and, and plan ahead. But then basically what they do is they, 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 they develop on their own, so they develop off-site in, in their own offices, in their own tooling infrastructure, and so on. And eventually at some point they, they deliver you a binary, and then basically you as a client are basically in charge taking the binaries, integ integrate them, and basically deploy them on your own um, hardware. And then of course you, you're going to test them. And the thing here is that that all sounds uh, kind of you know good in, in theory, but what actually happens is uh, that um, first of all, I mean, you need a lot to get done right until you, you see something right on your own ma machines. And then what happens is even if, let's say you, you you find a few 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 bugs, the question is who actually is responsible? So if you have just one supplier or two, that might be kind of fifty fifty chance. But let's say you have five. Right? You need a more complex triaging process to find out um, who actually is in charge of fixing the bug. And of course, the whole thing takes like forever. Um, since um, a real um, de full stack deployment is in, in, in involved, um, it might take weeks to get the bug fixes um, done and, 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 and running on your own hardware. And another point also is um, that uh, even that the test bug fix cycle may be too long, it is basically that uh, that you as a client, right, are kind of you know don't have a lot of responsibilities. So on the flip side, basically you are only in charge of integrating binaries and deploy them. What you're doing anyway, anyways, right? And uh, you then do manual testing. The results often are that basically especially when you have dependent supplier teams, so they depend on each, on your, on each other, you, you, you discover conflicts, misunderstandings, actually, right? Actual results, conflicts in the results very late in the process. Also, um, you've, you, 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 you only find bugs in, in, in an integrated, fully deployed system. That means everything that comes in between and kind of prevents that, right, is basically a blocker because you can't test. And of course, that, that, that requires quite um, high management efforts because lots of people are involved but you have to manage, coordinate and also pay. And often you as a client, right, you, you think, okay, I'm kind of unsatisfied with the process and even the quality is not as good as it, as it could be, but you know, it just takes so long. I can't afford to postpone my go life um, um, further. So in the end, you end up basically with running late often in the project, so you keep postponing anyways because the quality is still too bad, and you have way higher cost than, than expected. So the main reasons are also kind of obvious, I think I kind of can summarize them quickly, uh, is that since you, the, the, you, you talk quite frequently, but you integrate results quite infrequently, right? you, you basically are, are basically seeing results very, very late. The testing is too late in the process, and one of the main reasons probably is also the responsibility thing. So you have no, actually no concept on, on basically who works on what and how basically uh, do you resolve uh, the blame game, right? Who's in charge? Who is basically um, the guy who actually made the bug and has to fix it, right? And overall, in this whole process, uh, very often very many manual tasks involved which are possibly error-prone 
And basically, you redeploy and redeploy until you, 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 have, you, have, you have seen, oh, this web XML thingy, uh, I should have re replaced it earlier. OK, you can say uh, this is an extreme, and this is right. And there is an, 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 an another extreme, right, which is also um, often taken in another path. It says, OK, I don't care um, um, basically um, who you are and basically what you do best, but come to us, work with us. We know our process, we know our tooling, we know what we do best. And you, you develop, integrate, deploy, and test on-site with our team. That also is, is, is um, in theory, kind of kind of great. But often, even, let's say, or mostly, let's say, um, highly specialized suppliers don't accept that, right? They say, our teams, our, our people work most efficiently, right, when they are in, in our office using our tooling, using our process, using our virtualization environment, right? And that is really hard to transfer to the client side. It's not easy, right, to basically migrate all the tooling uh, you, have, you have built up over years as a supplier. In the end, it's, it's also not that efficient and even more expensive, mainly. So the strategy, basically, I'm trying to, to, to um, discuss today or basically to pre present, it's something we, we have been trying already. Um, but uh, maybe you have um, similar insights or similar experiences, or maybe you tried even something very similar. So basically, what we're trying is basically uh, we try to not just integrate binaries, we try to have another step here. We're trying to basically, uh, after the development is done, we're trying to take source, source releases, right, basically, and basically check and test and integrate them in, on the client side, autom automatically, right? And of course, I know, basically, you say this is very tricky and very difficult to get, get work it right, but we have a few things in place that makes it, I would say, as simple as the other strategies. So the first thing basically we count on is something which we call a scalable architecture. So we have enhanced Magnolia mod modules, which basically are way more simple to integrate. The second thing we have is basically something we call an automated code integration. That means we have a build chain that basically comes with generated build scripts, and they run like everywhere. They run always just the same. That makes basically um, code generation, inspection, and, 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 and integration on every machine, the same thing. And we have kind of a, um, specific roles which we put in place on the, on the client side that basically help us as a supplier to have somebody we can work with. So basically, we are the extended arm of the organization. Okay, let me go a little bit more in, 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 into details with these three points. So first, um, let's... let's um, develop an, an, an application, a web application together. Okay, usually a web application, we have like a main project, which we usually call main. It's the application is called ZigZag, right? And what this, what this project comes with, right? It comes with some general dependencies. So it has a Magnolia version you, 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 you pick, you work on, right? It has some external libraries, some, some other dependencies, and you, you, you define them in your system. Then, of course, it comes with the full stack, so it has the backend code, right? it has the Java, the, the FTL, all the, the server-side templating, and maybe even some more specific, specific libraries. It has some front-end scripts, basically everything you need to um, render your application in, in, the, in the browser with styles, and maybe even with, with uh, front-end libraries like jQuery or something else. And, of course, it comes with, with config, conf configuration. It says, you know, um, when you want to deploy that on a, web, on a web server, that's what you have to do. And um, when you do that with Magnolia, you don't have to do that just in one place, right? You basically, what you do is you, you can um, have modules. And we have here like three modules, so basically we come with, um, with two modules and one, one special one. So the, the module A and B you see here are basically there for implementing single point features. So it's just basically um, a sandbox where you as a supplier, basically, right, can implement the features you are requested to do. So. And we have a special module, which is called the core mo module. And that one basically uh, takes all the general dependencies you have into the project. So, so basically, it defines what Magnolia version you use, what libraries are available for all the mo modules. And on top of that, it provides an application-specific API that means every external service you depend on provides here client APIs that you can use 
in every other module. And here comes the, the trick. All the other modules basically inherit that. So you have only one dependency. Every module depends on the core module and nothing else. So this is the, the plan and basically and this is what we have been doing already in a couple of projects. And as a supplier, it gives you on the one hand lots of freedom because the only thing you have to know is basically everything that comes with a module. The rest of the system you, do, you, don't, you don't care about. Each module is fully deployable. You can put it on an application server, it runs, and you can basically check your components and your, your pages you have been doing. It comes with their own development config configuration, comes with the front-end code, and it comes with the back-end. So the full stack is encapsulated in one module. About the automated integration, just a few details here. Um, of course, this is the most tricky part. Uh, what we have, we have a, a basically a custom Maven archetype plugin, which basically um, allows us to control what's generated. So basically, every new supplier comes on, basically in, in, in the team, uses the generator to generate the, mo the new module. All the scaffolding is generated. It comes with um, sample service accesses, with sample um, uh, testing APIs. It comes with sample front-end uh, components. Everything you, you, you get there is already at least one example is, is there. And it's completely buildable. So it means when you run Maven Clean install, it just uh, can be instantly um, built and in installed, and you can even deploy it. Then we have a fully automated build chain. As I said, the front end and the back end build scripts are also generated, and they have to be the way they are, because basically what they do is, on top of just building and, and compiling, they also, also do a lot of checks. So basically, general code con con conventions right, put in place by the clients are basically enforced here. So the build just doesn't compile if you just do something which we don't want to. Also, lots of front-end um, uh, guidelines are enforced. For example, if you try to override styling from another module, we won't uh, allow that. In the end, you have kind of two special build pro pro processes. You have one which you do off-site, so basically every supplier is doing that. That's what I just explained. And then you have another one which is done on-site, which does on top, basically, uh, the building also it basically generates uh, test coverage reports on basically um, um, breakages of the conventions. So you get a report and see basically how well a module is doing. And based on that, you can go further and say, this is part of my release, or it's not. Okay, and to, to the last point, uh, as I said, we need a few uh, specific teams in our organization, basically as part of the project team. So we have basically the su supplier teams, uh, just have been talking about them. Uh, they can do basically what they do best. The full planning, the full development culture, the full tooling they use is just on, 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 on their own. Within the module, yeah, they can use the libraries they want on top of the one you already have de defined. They can basically uh, use the tools they want. All that is basically um, defined by, by them. Only basically every interference, when you basically interfere with, with other modules or with the core module, for example, that would be basically pre pre prevented. And they do a full implementation of all layers. They could, but you could also say, I have for that module, you have a front-end agency and a back-end agency, and then they have, they have the problem. As a client, basically, you don't, you don't care. We have a special supplier team, which is basically the core module team. As I said, it's just like the other one, the supplier teams, but you providing API. So basically, you providing API for the other modules. So what we have been doing so far is we just double the release cycle. So we, we, we always uh, release in the mid of an iteration, as a, or a sprint, whatever you want to call it, and at the, at the end. That gives basically the other suppliers a heads up what changes um, they have to, to deal with. And then you have the release team, and that is something which, which is usually on site, on, on the client side. And they basically run the continuous integration infrastructure, so the builds, and they basically check uh, the releases, so they get the quality reports and see what's, what's good or what's not so good. And they can then decide, basically, after inspection of the results, okay, the new version is better than the old one, or uh, it's too buggy, we don't want to risk it. And from that point on, you start testing. So there's one point I haven't been talking about that was the planning. The planning basically also is a little bit different. What you do is you do kind of an orchestrated release planning. That means 
your release is basically planned um, independently from the iterations. So you don't care how many iterations your, your supplier needs to bring something on. Um, the only thing you care about is that you will have a, have a joint exploration, which features are basically the, the most um, ones you want to basically release in the next version. You do the release planning to together, and then you basically let the supplier do what they do best. In the end, you do basically um, checking what they have been de delivering to you, and you basically do cherry picking and say, this is okay, this is not, not, not okay. So that's basically um, the low point from the technical side. I'm handing over to Michael. Thank you, Jan, for the technical insights. Um, so as a, you as a company or as a business guy, what, what do you gain? Our concept lines out clear responsibility. Your suppliers, they know the conventions, they, they know the, the rules of the game, and when they uh, build offsites, they get instant feedback during their offsite build process. So they, they are also always reminded uh, of the rules. Um, they produce less side effects. Because the technical interfaces between the core module and the dependent, depending modules, um, they are clear. The modules are properly isolated and the conventions uh, are automatically ensured, enforced um, to prevent that the suppliers break out of their sandbox. So you have less side effects. And if a, a rule gets broken, if a test fails, you know who is responsible for it. So you you have less of the um, of the uh, and of the the blame game that takes that can take a lot of energy out of you. And of course, um, you have less less management efforts because you have. Uh, Less, less conflicts. You, you, you agree in advance about the, the rules and you know how they are so, and you detect if the rules are broken. So secondly, you get back in the driver's seat. You, 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 you really are owner of your releases. Um, during the, the, the automated build process, uh, metrics are calculated and they reveal the, the quality of the delivered code. So you, you raise the bar, you, you, t you tell your suppliers what your metrics are, what you, what you expect fr uh, from them, and, and the, the tests, they test the code in backend, in front and in all layers um, that, that, you, that they deliver to you. And as a customer, based on those metrics, you can accept or reject the delivered module versions. So you define the versions being deployed and no one tells you, oh, oh sorry, um, we can't release this or that version. So you're in a position where you can act rather than react. Another adv advantage uh, of our concept is that um, you don't suffer from supplier lock-in. Your suppliers, they, they don't need to understand all the system. Um, they just apply the, the automatically enforced conventions. So they, the suppliers, they act in their sandbox and they're not able to break out. But still, your suppliers keep their creative freedom. They keep their tools, their processes, um, they just fulfill your for formal requirements about, let's say, test coverage. And if you're not satisfied, if you're not happy with the performance of a supplier, um, you can even exchange him with, with just a little overhead. So you, you keep the code and change the supplier. So in, in the long run, that means that your, your investments in the code, they are hatched. 
So you have less costs in the long run. And our, our concept also means that you, that you have, have more speed. If you take the road of the automated continuous delivery chain, you can cope with the high business expe expectations. You can, you can hit the target during development more often and make more often mistakes, learn more often from your mistakes, and you learn faster. So you can respond faster to, to business needs. Uh, you get more agile and you can speed up the digital, digitalization of your business. On our last slide, um, we visualize our approach of the source integration strategy and compare it to other strategies. In, in all strategies, you start developing and implement some unit tests. And already at this stage, uh, our concept starts to pay off. As explained by Jan, you, you, you start with, with scaffolded uh, modules, with auto-generated module skeletons, and you just type in one command, boom, and you're ready to start. Because you, you discover mistakes earlier, so already in the, the build process, uh, you do integration testing less often. So this is what uh, symbolizes the, the pyramid, and here uh, it, gets it, it gets wider, and here it gets more, more narrow, which means you have, you have less effort, less uh, work, workforce you, have, you, you, you need to put in. And your round trips are shorter, they bind less workforce, they cost less, and in the end, your projects get a higher probability to be on time, in budget, and in high quality. So the promise of our approach is that your investments in code are hatched more safe, and your business can scale. That's the, the end of our presentation, so we're open to questions or discussion.